Hey everybody, Dave Brodor, aka Locked and Loading, back here again for part two of my three-part series here with Adobe Stock. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna license multiple different assets from Adobe Stock. We're gonna have 3D assets. We're also gonna have photographic assets that we're gonna download. And we're gonna do a really cool technique called camera projection or camera mapping inside of 3D. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to take a photograph and we're gonna be able to reproject it onto very basic 3D geometry. And then we're gonna be able Able to place our Adobe Stock 3D assets within that photograph and make the shadows feel realistic and the lighting feel realistic as if it was actually shot in there in order to create our animation. And again, this is all about increasing our workflow and productivity. We don't actually have to go on location and take this shot. We don't actually have to model these 3D objects to make a really cool, unique animation that's very custom and specific to us that you won't see duplicated again, right? This is the whole idea. How do we produce more content? How do we produce it quicker, more efficiently, and get more content out there on our platforms? So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into this. So we're gonna start right off in Adobe Stock, searching for an image, and you can see this image I specifically picked out because it was wide and open. So let's kind of think of a theme and uh, and let's see what other assets we're gonna download. So also we're gonna license a 3D object that we feel that could be incorporated into that scene. So finding the image and as well as getting another image for the HDRI lighting. So this is what we're gonna use to light our entire scene so it feels completely unified. If you're having trouble finding where these are, just go to 3D and go to 3D lights, scroll down and say search 3D lights and you'll get a whole a range array of HDRI images to choose from. So let's just jump right into 3D here. Um, we're going to import our licensed image of our scene in, and we're going to dra drag and drop this on a very loose basic geometry, right? You can see I have two planes in my scene, a floor and a background, a back wall, and I'm going to just update these. I'm going to change the projection to camera mapping because that's the technique we're doing. And then I just have to specify what camera I want to project from and change the film aspect ratio to match that ratio ratio that the actual shot was taken in. So just like that, now we have very loose basic geometry on our object. Now we're going to bring in our 3D object that we uh, licensed, right, which is that stop sign. Now we really just have to position this and place it into the scene where we want it, get that right sense of scale and, and kind of orient it, maybe rotate it a little bit, just figure out how that fits in the scene. Obviously the 3D object I chose is something that's gonna feel very natural within that 3D scene. So when you download the 3D object, you get all those textures in it directly from Adobe Stock 3D, so you don't even have to think about this. So just import those in whatever texture you wanna create, and then you can drag and drop those textures right in directly on your objects. Okay, so now you can see that our lighting is working. Our object feels like it's actually shot. So you maybe just tweak it a little bit and get it exactly where you want it comfortably in that scene. But now it actually feels like it was photographed in there. So now I'm just looking at the color palette, the red bricks. I want to use a complementary color. So I'm using Adobe Color just to, you know, make that really you know, factor go quickly. And here's the animation already simmed up, ready to go. And so now I'm going to apply those textures from our Adobe Color, and we're going to see what we can do to render this out, right? Really quick, basic scene. Let's see what that final image is going to look like. So now we've got our render, our lighting's all set up, our 3D's in there. Let's adjust this inside of Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, we're going to set up a, a basic color correction of curves. I just kind of need to boost the mid mid tones, mid values of this. It was getting a little bit too crunchy for me. And I'm going to adjust the background red. It's a little bit too saturated. So I throw a hue and a saturation adjustment layer on it. And you can see I just pull it down ever so slightly. And this just kind of helps our subject matter be what pops, which are those spheres in our scene. And just that quick, we are done. We've got a final animation. So stay tuned, because tomorrow I'm showing you how we're gonna take Adobe Stock 3D Assets to make a seamless looping animation.